we finally have some positive news to share about Halo development. We have some information about Community BTB, some Forge maps coming in relatively soon, and also a way for you to get a free coding this weekend. So let's stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. I'm sure many of you remember this tweet about the layoffs that happened over at 343 that were hit pretty hard. A lot of the audio team, animation team, campaign team, all cut pretty much, saying this comes from a long running hiring freeze and a lot of contractor departures. But we actually finally have some positive news to share. Well, it looks like that hiring freeze might be starting to thaw out a little bit. As on the career page here at Microsoft, we have two positions opened at 343. One for a lead game designer, one for an art outsource manager. Both these positions here are rather senior positions. They don't really reveal anything too specific about what the jobs are and stuff like that. The only thing I saw that was somewhat interesting in here is that I mentioned about like first person and third person mechanic shooter kind of experience, which Halo obviously has both of those, mainly first person but we never use a turret or any kind of vehicle or oftentimes like that you go into third person mode so you need that experience for sure uh but they didn't really reveal anything specific about like any engines or gameplay like they didn't mention anything about that pretty general stuff I mean, that's kind of what these job postings are really about they're kind of just supposed to just kind of fish the people out there who have the general mindset this we're looking for someone with like six plus years of experience so like a highly seasoned veteran when it comes to game development similar thing here for the art outsource manager as well nothing too crazy here when it comes to the job description pretty standard stuff uh, i didn't i looked through this whole thing didn't see anything else popping up going like oh that's an interesting tr terminology right there because that's kind of what they know now to do with these different uh job postings that you can't get too specific with them because then you might reveal too much about what the position is actually going to be doing for you but it's good to know that microsoft is looking to hire people now they did state specifically that they were still hiring people during this hiring freeze, but they were very much like very specific if absolutely needed positions. Obviously 343 is not hiring on mass, but this is looking like a step in the right direction when it comes to the development of Halo. And hopefully Microsoft as a whole jumping out of that hiring freeze and starting to open up the gates a little bit. I mean, 343 still has a lot of shoes to fill when it comes to the development of Halo. If you guys remember this tweet right here from Sketch saying that there will be no more cinematic cutscenes for new seasons, basically because that animation team, that audio team was cut from 343 from those layouts. So there was some work that was probably left at the cutting room floor that they weren't able to finish because they just didn't have the manpower to do it. And that's also because, well, the season four cinematic just leaked out. I'm not gonna share it because I don't want my, my channel getting taken down, but if you wanted to look for it, guys, you can probably find it out there. People have been sharing around on Reddit and on Twitter, and it's just like a quick moment of the cinematics from season four uh, with no audio. There's no audio with this thing, so they they weren't completely finished. Now I've seen some people out there online saying like, oh my God, this is basically finished. Like, why did they not post this on for season four? Well. It's because 343 is stretched really thin. With all those layouts, they were hit really hard. Like when Jason Schreier here said that 343 was hit hard, that's because 343 was hit hard. So things like unfinished cutscenes were, well, just going to be left to be unfinished. It sucks as a Halo fan to see that, but ultimately, I don't think it's that big of a problem, honestly. I'd rather see 343 focus on things that are about the game themselves rather than like this loose narrative kind of thing that they were trying to sew together when it comes to the multiplayer side of things. Mainly because with these cinematics that we have seen for the seasonal trailers, well, they didn't really seem like anything. They seemed like individual stories that just kind of happened. Season three was a step in the right direction, but you gotta think about it like this, like what is the purpose of all this? Like why are we doing all these things with these cutscenes? No one really knows. We have seen from developers that were formerly part of 343 that they stated that this narrative that they were doing for the multiplayer had massive repercussions. This multiplayer live story that they were pushing just kind of seemed like just random events that were happening. They didn't really seem like there was anything tied to them. That's the thing about this thing, like most of the times when it comes to any kind of story that gets presented, say for a movie, for example, because we know this terminology a little bit better, that with a movie that you have the hook. It's the first 15 minutes of the movie. It establishes the main characters, it establishes their motives. And with this multiplayer live story, we don't have that at all. I know that these are mainly kind of supposed to be kind of context for the live service aspect of the gameplay, which is really cool, but you kind of have to hint at that to let us know like what's the big plan here, what's going on? Because if you don't know what's going on with the story, 
Why do we even need to care about this stuff? Think about with Call of Duty's live service story that they did back with uh, Warzone 1, right? You had the nuke that was in play and you had the bad guys who were trying to set it off to blow something up. So every time you would load in, you'd get, they would get one step closer to setting off that nuke to eventually it did happen and you end up playing it in Verdansk 84, kind of thing to give some context to that. That was cool. Give you some context, look forward to some overarching story part that you go, okay, how's the story gonna progress to this point right here? Uh, we see that a lot of times also with Fortnite, right? They had like the realities that were kind of breaking through each other and stuff like that. And each time it was a new season that would progress forward to eventually like a new chapter would start and kind of resetting the map. That would make sense. We didn't get that with Halo Infinite. It seemed like we were starting to get there, but even with season three, like what is the purpose of Aratus going into the UNSC service to try to infect things? Yeah, it's for the banished to, I guess, help the banished a little bit. That's why Aratus is like, I'm gonna take over this empty Spartan husk to mess with the UNSC, I guess, in their system or somewhat. Like what's Eratus's goal? We don't know that at all. Now, if we knew that he wanted to say, bring Atriox back, right? That's what was hinted at the end of the campaign of Halo Infinite, tie that into the campaign, into the multiplayer side of things. That's when things get interesting. Cause you know, eventually Atriox is likely gonna be coming back and you wanna see how much we get closer and closer to that point with each new season. That would be something really cool, but we don't have any of that overarching story. So that's why I don't have any interest in the story at all. So knowing that 3431 doesn't have the manpower to create cinematics anymore, and two, they're still putting that focus on the game itself, I'm actually happy about that because ultimately, I didn't really care much for the story. So thank you for listening to my TED Talk. But let's get into the next Halo story. Back to some positive Halo news. Community BTB is currently in the works and should be coming around here rather shortly. In a response on Twitter, someone reached out saying it have any clue if Forge Maps are coming into BTB, and we did know that they were in the works, but not quite sure what was going on with it. Michael Shore finally came in and said, yes, community BT May maps will be making our way into matchmaking, but I don't really have an ETA at the moment, which is definitely sad to hear that we don't really know when, but since it is in the works, you could assume that relatively soon we could get some maps, maybe as soon as, soon as season five. We do have an idea of what the turnaround is because this was stated back on Twitter. Michael Shore right here did state that the turnaround we've seen is around eight weeks at the soonest when it comes to maps. But I think this is more in context of Arena rather than BTB. As you can may assume, BTB maps are bigger. More things could go wrong with them. More players on the map, more complexity, vehicles and stuff like that. A lot of extra variables that you need to test out. So I can imagine that being a little bit longer. So I would say season five would be at the earliest, maybe season six. It just kind of depends on how many maps they want to do, how complex they want the maps to be and stuff like that. Don't forget, we still have that Husky Raid community challenge thing that's going on right now where people are making Husky Raid maps. And we do know that the turnaround on that will be quite a bit faster. Stayed here by Michael Shore as well, saying we could ingest Husky Raid maps quicker, but I'd stick with a two month timeline. Given Given that they are a simpler setup when it comes to the maps, there's less testing and also that the mode itself is less serious. So you don't need to make sure that it's competitively viable, just balanced enough to where people can have fun. And development for Husky Raid has been in the works since May, so two month time frame would definitely put us into that season five time frame, which I could assume would be a launch mode for season five. And of course, if we get that information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. And lastly, this weekend of watching this video once it was posted, you have a chance to get a free coding. And you get that coding by watching the optic major that's happening this weekend from June 30th to July 2nd. Now, at first glance, you're like, wow, blue, really cool. But it is kind of shiny. It has a bit of a covenant feel when it comes to the hexagonal shape on it. So they haven't even highlighted it right here so you can see. And they're calling this the covenant frontline armor coding. But they segment segmented out the coding in the kind of an odd way to retain viewership. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because you'll have to unlock this for each armor core. So for June 30th through July 2nd, for Mark V and the Rakshasa core, watch two hours, you'll get the coding. For the Chimera, watch a co-stream for two hours. That's one of these partnered streams like Scump and, and other people. You'll see in the Twitch chat, they'll probably put drops enabled and stuff like that. You'll know who's going live with that kind of stuff. So you have to watch something else, someone else's stream beyond just the Halo Twitch stream, which, you know, it's pretty standard when it comes to these Twitch drops up. July 1st and the 2nd, that's when you can unlock the Mark 7 and the Eagle Strike version of this core for watching two hours. And then on July 2nd, which is going to be the finals, you begin the Yorai and Mirage version for this uh, Covenant Frontline coding 
camera here and also you get the hazmat version of it for watching the grand finals for 45 minutes so make sure your twitch account is set up properly to receive these drops i get comments all the time every single time when it comes to a Twitch shop saying, BR didn't get it. Well, you need to make sure your account is linked up with Halo Waypoint with Twitch. Best way to get these codings is just to go onto a live stream that has drops, have that stream open for two hours. You just need to have the browser open on your computer or on your phone or whatever, and you'll get the drop. But yeah, it's nice to actually talk about some good Halo news for once.